Hey everybody, it's Ben here and I am in front of a GM EV1 and with me here is Doug, uh, one of the people that helped make it possible to get this car down here to the event. So Doug, could you tell me a little bit uh, about this car, kind of the origin story, what it took to get down here? Sure, so GM donated this vehicle to a technical college in Oklahoma. We've had it for about 18 years, it's bounced around between a few different institutions, but Tulsa Tech has it currently right now and was very allowing of us to bring it to the show and ultimately we're going to get placed in a museum near Tulsa, Oklahoma. And when GM did not crush all the cars, there were some saved, but it was with the stipulation that they went to museums, uh, educational, you know, universities, tech schools, yeah. and I think there was one other thing, wasn't there? Uh, it's escaping my mind right now. It might have been, or maybe, you know, yeah, this is one of the ones that went to the educational institutions, and I think the intent was that they would take it apart, study it, modify it, and get it running. That wasn't done with this one, so it's very special in the fact that it's still pristine, hasn't been tinkered with, hasn't been modified at all. Now, GM did retain the batteries and a few critical electrical control modules to render it, you know, so you couldn't drive it. Right, we cannot drive, we're not taking this out on the track or anything. No, we don't want to. I mean, it still has original tires on it, original wiper blades and everything else. So the least we can do to put any wear on it, the better for us, because that maintains in a museum quality condition. Now, I actually saw uh, yesterday, Chelsea was outside with the car and they, they pushed it. So we did yeah. get, we saw a moving car shot, but not under its own power anyway. Uh, yeah, there were a couple of people, including myself, pushed it and I got it going, but yeah, it, it rolls just fine. It's very light to uh, to maneuver and get around. So, And Chelsea followed us down on the journey from Tulsa to get here. So and that, that sounds like an adventure. Can you tell oh, me yeah. what did it take to get down here? Did you have a big gas pickup truck, or how did this get down here? No, that's the other incredible part of the story. We actually towed it down with an Audi e-tron, the EV SUV that they have, and nobody's done this before, so we didn't know what to expect. So we left out Tuesday morning from Tulsa, Temperatures were in the high 30s, so it was very cold. But believe it or not, by the end of the journey, we realized we could get over 100 miles of range in the Audi e-tron, pulling over two tons in 40 degree weather. So we were all very impressed with it. Yeah, but we wanted to do that to prove a point of the capabilities of today's EVs, as far as towing, working in cold conditions. Uh, we had a fast charge about five or six times on the way down, but. Uh, what, what charging system were you using? Uh, Ele EA, Electrify America for the most part. We used a Francis Solar Charger at one point in Oklahoma. At the very beginning of the journey, we were trying to be very conservative, so stopping as often as we could to charge. And again, how many miles was that trip? Uh, 500 total, about 500 miles, yeah. The long, the, we found the range could probably been over 100 miles, it, towing that much weight in that cold of a condition. But, yeah. but this was 500 miles with towing, yep. no gasoline, people no. don't do this. That's right, yeah, like I said, it's groundbreaking in a lot of different ways, but we wanted to prove a point. Said, what? you know, we're going to fully charge live. We don't want to tow it down with a gas car, right? That would be bad form. So we all hatched a plan for uh, for an EV to tow it down. It worked out beautifully, it went very smooth. So. Uh, is there anything in particular that you're really excited about at this event? Oh, I, just talking to all the people and all the interaction and the crowds gathering around the EV1. I think a lot of people, didn't realize this car is going to be here. This all came together so quick that they didn't promote it or put it in the materials. So it was sort of a surprise for the show that it was able to show up here. But it was a true partnership between our chapter, the Electric Auto Association, Tulsa Tech, Audi, and Fully Charged Live. So everybody was totally on board and very supportive of getting it down. So. Uh, is there anything that you, and anything else you want to tell my YouTube audience here? Uh, well, mainly come out and see it. We're going to put this in the heart of Route 66 Museum in April up near Tulsa, Oklahoma. So it'll be available for the public to come in and take a look. And more exciting, this is going to be the centerpiece of a future electric vehicle museum that we're going to start of national prominence. So we haven't told a lot of people that yet. So we're just getting out around now. So they're some of the first to hear that. So yeah, we're going to get an annex built to that museum, solar powered. And this will be the centerpiece of the collection. Oh, and, and if people want to find out more about this, is there a web page or some other place Eventually, for information? This has all happened so quickly. Four months ago, I didn't even know we had an EV1 in Oklahoma. Wow. So it's almost been a whirlwind of trying to pull things together. 
But yeah, we'll, we'll get it into the museum in April, and it'll be, of course, heavily promoted on there as well. And, and I'm sure on the, the, the Oklahoma EAA group, people can find out more about this, I would imagine? Sure, yeah. If they go to electricauto.org and look up our chapter, we have a little bit of information on there. But again, we've been so involved in trying to just make sure we could get it here. We haven't really promoted it, but Chelsea Sexton's been doing that through her medium. So, yeah, it's still a little bit under the radar right now. So, it's uh, yep, we'll make sure it's, it's properly respected and appreciated in the future. So. Okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, spending uh, some time with me. Uh, this is a great looking vehicle. I'm going to try to get some uh, quick close up shots here. So, Doug, thank you yes. very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So we've got a very simple interior here, steering wheel, uh, kind of a heads-up display, not unlike a Prius. Big stick shift in the middle, kind of reminds me of a Chevy Volt. It's got the battery right down the middle here. T-bone battery, uh, you know, we still see some of this. Very simple two-seater, kind of reminds me of a Honda Insight or something like that. Not drivable. Uh, not drivable, unfortunately. Keyless entry. Actually reminds me quite a bit of the Chevy Volt. Uh, amazing how advanced this car was for the time though. The EV1 really was an amazing car and far ahead of its time. A uh, great big thank you to Doug Duke, Chelsea Sexton, the Oklahoma Electric Auto Association, and everybody else who uh, made it to be able to get this car out to the event. It was just fantastic. Uh, the last time I had seen an EV1 in person was when uh, we fixed one up and had Chelsea Sexton drive it in Madison, Wisconsin, which was quite some time back now. I do have videos on that, so please check those out as well. Uh, there is something called the EV Grin. Usually we talk about that when you get to drive an electric vehicle, but frankly, when you're around a car this cool, it's hard not to smile. So as always, I hope you uh, enjoy these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that little notification bell, tell all your friends about this. And until next time, stay charged up.